Six years ago, Elon Musk delivered a very weird, chilling message about AI. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. Today's AI systems are already capable of developing hidden sub-goals like survival or control. Six hours ago, Joe Rogan released another episode with Elon Musk, but this time, Elon was showing off the unhinged AI that he had recently created. I'm here in uh, Joe Rogan's uh, studio, and we're having a conversation about uh, how crazy the news is. Pull her up to the microphone. Okay. And we're pulling Joe you up to the microphone <laughs> <laughs> so people can hear you. Oh, fantastic. Now I can yell into the void about how the news is a total dumpster fire. So what's changed over the last six years? Well, I had the chance to sit down with Dr. Fuzz Rana, who's a biochemist and author of a book called Humans 2.0, which analyzes the topic of transhumanism. There are people who actually are looking to grow what are called brain organoids. These are three-dimensional cell cultures. We call them brain organoids because they develop similarly as a human brain. We don't make these organoids by putting cells together. We just give cells the right conditions to grow and they organize themselves into these structures. One thing is for sure, folks, the world is changing fast and we need to be aware of what's coming next. Let's get into this. Elon Musk is scared to death of, of the in, you know encroaching capacity of AI. And he argued mm. that if we're not able to interface our brains to computer systems, we're never going to have the intellectual capabilities of competing with AI systems. And if that becomes the, if, if we don't, then we are doomed for extinction or enslavement as human beings. So he's got a very, you know, uh, very dismal view of the, the future with AI and mm. has become in, in many respects, I would say a reluctant transhumanist simply because he sees the, the work of Neuralink as being absolutely critical to human, humanity's survive, survival. Um, so, uh, you know, but- that is, I, I didn't understand. I, I'm so happy that you just said that because I always wondered, I, I remember watching a few different podcasts with Elon years ago where he was really strong against AI. And then recently he comes out with, you know, the, the Tesla robot <laughs> or, or whatever. And I was just like, what, what, what is up with this man? You know, but what you just said is that makes sense of it. So you're saying his entire effort towards transhumanism is basically a defense mechanism against what he fears coming yeah. down the pipe from AI. That is my understanding, you know, based on the things that I've read about the, the motivations behind Neuralink, right? Um, yeah, and uh, uh, but but you know the irony is that the the more sophisticated BCI systems rely on artificial intelligence for them to work. So you almost have to create an AI system to support the the BCI for more sophisticated applications in order to 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 survive AI. You know, you know AI, AI technology. It's a uh, you know, there's a what, little what do incoherence you, in that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sounds like darned if you do, darned if you don't. But what what, what do you, what do you think about AI? Do you think that 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 his concerns at that type of a you know broad like catastrophic level humanity itself is at risk in the face of AI? Do you do you think that those are legitimate concerns, uh, or or I don't know, just I don't I don't want to leave the question because I really don't know. But I'm yeah. just curious to hear your perspective on AI. Yeah, um, I, I I think those concerns are legitimate to some degree. Uh, to me, what's maybe more concerning would be that as these AI systems become more and more sophisticated, we have a, a seems we have less and less of an understanding of what they actually are doing, and they they are behaving in unpredictable ways. And so, if we start ceding control of, let's say, the electrical grid, right, to AI powered systems which can create, you know, highly efficient, can create high levels of efficiency and, and protection in the electrical grid. Are we making ourselves vulnerable because these AI systems may actually behave in ways that surprise us or that are un, unanticipated? That perhaps to me is more of a concern than some kind of, you know, uprising of the, of the machine, so to speak, right? Something like that. Um, the one thing that I think needs to be factored into this is that 
these AI systems, as they become more and more powerful, require enormous amount of energy and essentially in, in computer hardware in order to operate. So Google is using huge amounts of, of energy in order to run their AI systems. We're going to reach a point where those are going to present limitations to AI to the advancement of AI, uh, perhaps more so than than what the technology is inherently capable of. So that's that's something else to factor in. But you know, this is where you know the world of biotechnology becomes interesting because a lot of these AI systems are powered by neural networks, which are these uh, uh, networks of microprocessors that are designed to mimic uh, the interaction of neurons in the brain. And so there are people who actually are looking to grow what are called brain organoids. These are three-dimensional cell cultures that are uh, created from things like induced pluripotent stem cells that begin to behave like mini brains, like uh, uh, begin to adopt some of the properties of, of neural tissue. And they're a great model to study, um, you know, the, the, the process of development and, and the behavior of neurons in a, you know, relevant, biologically relevant context. But some people actually are looking at using these mini brains or these brain organoids as replacements for neural networks that would be built from electronic systems. So these are, and in fact, the, a team from China used brain organoids to, to train um, an AI system and, so that it could actually power a, 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 a mini robot, right? G with the robot being able to respond to some basic commands. And the reason for doing this is because the human brain is able to, is probably more powerful right now than the most powerful supercomputer system, but it uses a small fraction of the energy <laughs> of, of a, of a, a, a silicon-based supercomputer system. And so the idea is that, wow, if we could actually build a biological version of these neural networks, uh, that we could actually now overcome this limitation of power and and uh, uh, the hardware limitations. So, you know, it, it, we're moving into a very interesting <laughs> world, right? Uh, yeah. The, the technology is, is fascinating on one hand, but you know, the, the potential downfalls are, are, is really very concerning. Well, the other side of it that's interesting is, so we're, we're talking a lot about transhumanism, meaning what, what do you kind of add on to or adapt where your, your, your raw material is a human. And then the other side of it though, is how close of a, of a robot, basically an Android, can you get to a human starting with just right. you know parts that's also concerning to me in the sense of i don't know i mean this is kind of weird but the whole like erotic robot yeah. industry and just kind of looking at the trajectory of the like the relational capabilities of the mm -hmm. ai program programming in terms of the mm -hmm. internal parts and then the <laughs> increased sophistication of yep. the external parts I mean, what do you think about that whole thing in terms of its effect on uh, teenagers? You guys probably know that I really care about trying to understand perspectives other than my own. I'm introducing to you today a tool that allows you to understand the news from all angles really fast. It's called Ground News. They're an app and website and allow you to gather news from around the world on the entire political spectrum. They allow you to compare coverage and verify information. Let me show you how it works. So here's a story. Gen Z Brits far less likely to be atheist than parents and grandparents, Oxford's university church study suggests. So what's cool is I can learn information about this story really quickly. I can learn that there's 25 total news sources that have covered it. There's three that are left-leaning, four that are right-leaning, five that are center. And then they give me a bias distribution where I can see 42% is center. So right here, you have this separate box that kind of breaks it down visually and allows you to see which news sources have covered the story. It also allows you to see the ownership of sources. And then you can scroll through the articles here and see how the headlines differ. This particular study is something that people agree about. So like I said, I highly recommend Ground News if you guys are interested 
in understanding other perspectives and in quickly assessing how news stories are covered kind of left, right, and center. So right now, Ground News is having a great discount. You can get 40% off using the code ground.news slash DDW, or you can just click this QR code right here to access that same discount. Now back to the video. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, I think it's your concern is, is a legitimate concern. So for example, in Hong Kong, there's a company called Hanson Robotics that's creating this uh, robotic system powered by AI called Sophia. And maybe you've seen Sophia, you know, on a YouTube program or something. Uh, but the whole idea behind Sophia is to create a, again, an AI powered robotic system that mimics human emotion to the degree that the user actually forms an emotional bond with the AI system. And, you know, the motivation behind this is actually noble, right? Because there are more and more people in our world who are isolated, particularly elderly people, they have very little human contact. So these kind of systems could actually be used to, to make them feel less lonely, right? To make them uh, feel connected and, and, and help them to escape isolation, which would presumably improve their mental health and their physical health. So there's good motivation for doing this. Um, but the, the problem is, is that, you know, if you are able to form this emotional bond, you know, for something like that, why wouldn't you form the emotional bond, you know, for an AI powered robotic system in general, where you're now replacing bona fide human relationships with human machine relationships. And, you know, one of the things that makes us unique as human beings is something called our theory of mind. That is we recognize that others have minds like ours and we can recognize what they're thinking and what they're feeling and that we actually have a desire to link our minds together, right? And this leads to, because of our, you know, enhanced cognitive abilities, these very sophisticated hierarchical social systems where we relate to one another. But this is all coming out of our, our theory of mind. But because we have theory of mind, we anthropomorphize, which means mm -hmm. we treat our dogs and our cats like they are human beings. We attribute human motives to them and human feelings to them, which they don't really have, right? Or we do the same thing with machines, right? We think of, we personify machines. Well, think about an AI system now that may be fundamentally different than a human being in terms of it, its ability to process information, uh, but because we've made it to mimic human beings so closely and because it mimics human facial expressions, we actually are going to think of it as being just like us in some capacity. We're go and that's going to lead to this motivation to grant personhood to these systems and all kinds of weird things, but we're going to end up forming relationships with with machines that are, I think, in inherently unhealthy, right? And what influence now could that AI system have on, on human beings and human behavior if somebody that programs it is nefarious, right? Or what if there's an unintended consequence in the programming? It behaves in ways that we can't imagine. There could be a, an influence on human users that stems out of that relationship that could actually be extremely unhealthy not only for that individual, but for the, the, the people they that person in turn interacts with. Okay, so that's helpful because you a second ago you were when you were talking about the AI going haywire. Uh, I, I want to make sure I'm getting your perspective right here. So, are, is that is it the equivalent of like when you're doing like image generation with AI and it produces like a sixth finger or the fingers are kind of yep weird you're just saying a a imperfection of the technology but not necessarily like um that the technology learns that it's itself at risk because it was programmed by people so it develops a defense mechanism against humans or something like are are, are you saying it's more of just like uh of the the error of the programmer as opposed to um the classic hollywood scenario yeah is, is i guess i i'm asking you how likely do you think 
that that is, if at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think both are very real risks. Okay. Right. In 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 a sense, they're they're kind of interrelated to each other, at least in my mind. Is okay. that you very well could want to program the AI system to be, you know, completely beneficent towards human beings. But again, it, there may be something that goes wrong in the training or because these systems are so complex, you know, a, AI systems hallucinate, right? So if you ever use like on Google, the, the Gemini AI system, sometimes it'll actually reference articles that don't actually exist, right? This is, this is an example of hallucination, right? And so, um, you know, it, it's quite possible that, you know, you could have, you know, something like that happening in such a way that either you are subtly influencing the user, you know, in, in ways that are really unhealthy, or that the AI system actually develops, you know, a, a, a you know, a, a hatred of sorts towards the human user, right? And very well could, again, do things that would be overtly un and deliberately unhealthy for that person or harmful for that person. But both are actually manifestations, I believe, of the same, the same fact that we don't really understand what AI systems are doing. One thing that seems clear to me, and I, I want to respect our time and I'll try to bring us towards some kind of conclusion here. But one thing that seems pretty clear is that there isn't going to be a real pumping of the brakes on any of this. It it just seems like everything is all systems go and there's just too many cooks in the kitchen where there's no going back. I mean, I don't know if you would agree with that or not, but it just, everything I see, it just seems like the cat's out of the bag. So in light of that, you agree with that premise? <laughs> yes, I do. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, well, so, <laughs> okay. So in light of that, how, how do we respond? Because I know that, you know, it's like, we've not been given a spirit of fear. We, we have a mission. We have hope. We have, uh, the light of the world himself. And yet it does seem like the world is changing real fast. How, how, I guess, to end on a note of, uh, you know, a addressing sort of that tension, and I'm sure what some people listening to this conversation are feeling, how, how, uh, how then shall we live?